In this video, we'll look at an example of one dimensional motion, specifically that of, a, of an object in free fall. Here you can see the problem statement. It says you drop a coin down a dry well, you count three seconds before you hear it hit the bottom, and you're being asked to find out how deep the well is. And then there's a second part to the question. It says you throw a second coin straight down. And this time, uh, you only count one and a half seconds before you hear the coin hit the bottom. What velocity did you throw the coin with? So what was the velocity when you threw the coin? At this point, pause the video, take a moment to think about the situation, diagram it out, draw a picture, um, see if you can answer these questions yourself. When you've made the attempt and you've got an answer or if you get stuck, then come back to the video, unpause it, and uh, watch how I go about solving this situation. So we want to find out how deep this well is. The first thing I'm going to do is just start drawing a picture of what this situation would look like. Of course, there's a well, and it's going to have, right, so uh, it's going to look something like this. Uh, there's going to be a coin and we're dropping the coin. Now that's important because that means it's not being thrown down. Instead, it's gonna just be dropped. So uh, its initial velocity, and I might call this you know, point one. So my velocity one is going to be zero meters per second. So I'm gonna start uh, with no speed and I'm gonna accelerate towards the bottom. So this is just gonna fall straight down the well and uh, just before it hits the bottom, it'll have some velocity. We might call that V2 if we call this position, if this we, we call this 2. Um, now, we don't know what that is, okay? but we do know that it's going to be falling. It's going to be accelerating. In fact, we know that the acceleration in this direction is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Right. Depending on our choice of coordinate system, it may be positive 9.8 meters per second squared or, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but we do know that its magnitude is 9.8 meters per second squared. What else do we know? We also know, or we're trying to find out how deep the well is, so we're going to want to try and find out the height of this well, and I might call that h. And there is one other piece of information that I know, and that is that this distance or the the time it takes me to fall through height h and i'm just going to call that uh, t and maybe we'll call this t a since it's it's uh, the first uh, question um, that that time is going to be three seconds All right so i know that t a is three seconds and i know v1 is zero meters per second now, I need to choose a coordinate system so that I can uh, write down what my, my uh, uh, velocity is. And so here's a case, since everything is moving downwards, I think I will just choose down as the direction of positive, and let's call that the y direction. So I'll call that the, the positive y direction. Um, and uh, then I know my acceleration is just going to be a positive g which again, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And at this point, I'm probably ready to start looking at my kinematic equations to see if I can uh, come up with one that might help me get to the answer that I'm interested in and help me find out what the height of my well is. When I look at the information I have, I notice I've got initial velocity, I've got uh, an acceleration. I've got the time the coin falls down the well, and what I'm looking for is the distance it fell through. And so a good candidate for answering this question uh, is the following kinematic equation. If I looked at the position, my position at some later time is equal to my initial position plus my initial velocity times that time uh, plus 
one to half my acceleration times that time squared. Now I'd like to plug in uh, my variables, the ones that I chose for my picture. And here's where choosing down to be the positive direction pays off because everything in this problem is all the directional quantities, the velocity and the acceleration, all are downwards. And in fact, my displacement, if I if I want to, I, my displacement is downwards. And so I can make all of those now positive quantities. So when I plug in my variables, I'm going to get the following. I'm going to get h is equal to, and I'm just going to plug in zero for my initial velocity. So this is going to go away. Um, uh, and really, this h is x minus x zero, or maybe my I could say that this is the origin. This is zero position. Uh, however you want to think about it is is fine. But I do move through a displacement of h. My initial velocity is zero, so that disappears, and what I'm left with is one half g t a squared. And that is my answer. That is the height of this well in terms of all known quantities. If I plug in my own values, this is 1 half. This is 9.8 meters per second squared. My time is 3 seconds, 3 seconds squared. And when I calculate that out, I got uh, 44.1 meters as the height of the well. So this well is 44.1 meters tall. Now focusing on this second question, it's a different situation, so I'm going to need to set it up a little bit differently. I'll have to reset up my my picture because now I've got once again I'm uh, a coin going down a well. It's the same well. Uh, we also have a time given, but we're going to throw it this time. It's not being dropped as it was before. Now it's being thrown. So again, I'll redraw my picture but I'll include the new situation. So there's my well, I've got a coin, but this time instead of being dropped so that its initial velocity is zero, I'm still gonna call this one. So I might still call this V1. And uh, this time, I don't know what that is. It's not being dropped, so it can't be zero. Uh, it's gonna just go straight down. I didn't throw it across, I threw it straight down. And so when it gets to the bottom, it's gonna have some larger velocity. We might call that v2. Maybe we still call this position 2. Uh, maybe this is uh, situation b, okay, because it's the second situation. Uh, we don't know what that final speed is either, final velocity is either. Uh, but we do still know that the acceleration is downwards. And if we choose the same convention of down being the positive y direction, then that acceleration is going to be a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know two other pieces of information. We know that this, uh, this well has a height. And since it's the same well as before, we now know what that height is. We know that the height is 44.1 meters. So that's now a known quantity for the second part of this problem. And we also then know that we have a time, which I'm going to call time uh, B since this is the second part of this problem. And we know that time B is equal to um, uh, one and a half seconds. So half as long. I don't see anything else I might know about this problem. And so at this point, I'm probably ready to start writing down uh, my kinematic equations, um, uh, replacing the variables in those equations with, with my variables and seeing if, I, if I've got enough information or if I need to come up with uh, some other relationships uh, to be able to answer this question. Once again, uh, I notice that I'm given a time and an acceleration. This time, instead of being given a velocity, I'm given the displacement. I'm given the height through which this coin moves. 
And what I'm interested in is the initial velocity, right? I'm interested in the velocity at which the coin was thrown into the well. So I'm interested in initial velocity. Initial velocity, a displacement a time that that displacement happened in and the acceleration, that suggests that the equation that might serve me best is actually the same equation as I used in the initial uh, if, for question one, right? Where I have my my uh, initial, final position is equal to my initial position plus my initial velocity times time plus one half my acceleration times time squared. Of course, this is the generic equation, so I always want to uh, input my own variables. For example, I know that uh, uh, once again, h is x minus x naught. Right, that's my my displacement is the height of the well. So if I write this, I can write h equals, and now I don't know what my initial time, what my initial velocity is, but I do know that I've called it one b times time b, and plus one half my acceleration, which is g times time squared, and that's time b squared. Okay. And now I can rearrange this to try and solve for the initial velocity. Uh, if I uh, start to do a little bit of algebra, if I move this uh, term with the one half g times time squared over to the, uh, the other side of the equation, so I subtract that off from both sides of the equation, I'm going to get that my v1b times my time b is equal to uh, my height minus this term. And then I can see that I can divide both sides of my equation by uh, the time. And so if I get that, I'm going to get V1B is equal to my height divided by my time minus uh, one half G times my time squared divided by time. And that's going to give me a, a cancellation. There's uh, this time in the bottom is going to cancel with one factor of time in the top. And so what I'm going to be left with as my answer is that my initial velocity is this height divided by the time it took to fall minus this, this uh, factor of uh, one half g t. And that's my answer. So now I can plug in my numbers and so I'm going to get uh, my height, which we found before, that's 44.1 meters, divided by my time. In this case, that's 1.5 seconds. Minus this sort of this correction factor, which is going to be g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times my time of 1.5 seconds, all divided by 2. And that works out to be 22.05 meters per second. So I threw this coin with a speed of 22.05 meters per second down a well that had a height or a depth of 44.1 meters. So I've got my answers but it's always good to do to check them. And just at one quick sanity check I could do is I know that I'm starting my motion at, at this speed of 22 meters per second, and I'm going downwards in the same direction as my acceleration. And so my final speed should be much higher. And somewhere in the middle of the, this, uh, this path, I should reach my average speed. Um, and we can calculate what the average speed, but I should be speeding up as I'm falling downwards. So my average speed should end up higher than my initial speed. So we can calculate what the average speed is. That's just my total distance, I'm uh, my total displacement in this case, which is the 44.1 meters over the time it took to go through that displacement, which in this case is 1.5. Uh, seconds. And when I plug that into my calculator, I got a time of 
29.4, sorry, a, a value of 29.4 meters per second. And so you can see that uh, this, my average is larger than my initial value. And so it matches my, my intuition. So in this example, we were able to look at a situation involving free fall motion. And we were able to use one dimensional kinematics to solve and find the height of this well and the initial speed of the coin. Now in this problem, we only ever used one of the kinematic equations, but if the problem had been a little bit more complicated, we may have had to use different equations uh, or possibly two equations at a time. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can come talk to me or come see me, ask me during class.